Namaste. Well, after the last video, <laughs> what is is, what ain't ain't, I figured, well, I've, I've said it perfectly. I finally nailed it. Uh, I was able to express the actual view of Brahman realization. And uh, I knew that I had nailed it. I mean, I knew I got it right. <laughs> okay. Question is, did anybody else notice it? So I decided I was not going to say anything. I'm not going to do another video, at least not another talky talky explanation video, until someone responded appropriately, not just thank you or, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's nice, you know, you're welcome, but what about it? So finally, uh, this one fellow, I think it's his first time ever posting comment on the channel, nailed it exactly. He got it exactly right. He expressed, finally, the true significance of this work, of this channel, and the meaning of these explanations. And what it is, in a nutshell, is the highest view of Advaita from the Vivartavada platform. You know, forever, I think, we've been talking about these four levels of consciousness and the four views that derive from them and the four yogas and so on that go along with them etc. and so forth. So, <laughs> see, we have a problem with most of the people who are presenting stuff on Advaita. And the problem is that in order to meet their audience halfway, or maybe it's because of their uh, the limitations of their realization or so I don't know why it is, you know, but whatever reason, they are going down into Vishishta Dvaita Vada. In other words, they are making uh, Brahman the object of a dualistic religion. Huh? I mean, this is really a joke, right? Because the whole point of Brahman is that it's non-dual. So, by presenting Brahman as the, the god, you know, the deity of a, of a new religion, Advaitism, or whatever you want to call it, these people are misleading their audiences, and maybe even themselves as well. It's, it's hard to tell. Uh, but basically what they're doing is making another dualistic religion out of Advaita. And, you know, as someone who uh, is quite comfortable in non-dual space, I have to, um, actually, I, I have to put myself in a lot of stress to come down to the Vivartavada platform just so I can talk about it at all. Huh? Um, and to come down another step from the Vivarta to the Vishishta Dvaita platform uh, is just impossible for me. I just couldn't do it. Uh, it would be unethical, for one thing. Uh, in fact, one can even debate the ethics of coming to the Vivartavada platform because Vivartavada is also dualistic. So, um, the real message of Advaita is silence. And it can only be silence. Ramana Maharshi discusses all this in great detail. I don't need to go into it. Um, why that's so. But as soon as you begin to talk about Advaita, it becomes Vivartavada. <laughs> Vivartava means the world is an illusion. 
And so the principal uh, methodology in Vivartavada is neti neti. Not this, not this, not this, not this. Whatever comes up, whatever is perceived is not the reality. Because it's perceived, it means it's different from the self. And whatever is different from the self is duality, and therefore illusion. So we reject it. That's the Vivartivada. But others are saying now, they're, they're putting uh, a Dvaita now on some kind of a platform and saying, well, this is far away and we have to follow all these rules and we have to meditate and we have to study all this stuff and blah, 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 blah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. To verify the truths of a Dvaita requires nothing more than unbiased observation of your own experience. When I say unbiased, that means you're not tempted to interpret your experience in terms of the uh, name and form, terminology and concepts and so forth, of duality. But that you'd look at your experience in terms of these four states of consciousness. And if you do, you'll find what we've been asserting all along, that all four states of consciousness are available all the time to everyone. So in other words, it's not like Advaita or Brahman or pure consciousness is something different from you. No, it's the self. It's you. It's who and what you are. And the other things that we perceive, like the mind, the body, thoughts, sense, perceptions, and so on, these are unreal. They are duality. And the reason they're duality is they're different or apparently different from the self. But then once the realization of Brahman matures, one sees that these are also Brahman. <laughs> They're simply Brahman with clothes on. <laughs> Brahman with a covering. And these coverings are called Upadi. Upadi comes in different flavors. <laughs> There's jiva tam, which means the covering of an ordinary human being that is born. That's what jiva means, someone who is born. There's isha tam, which means the covering of God, uh, the Ishwara, the controller, the, the, the God, the deity. And then there's just ordinary maya. <laughs> All of these apparently different things in this world. But these are not real. They can never be real because they change. They come into existence, stay for some time, and disappear. And this happens every day to all of us. When we go from waking, Jagrat consciousness, to dreaming, Svapna consciousness to deep sleep consciousness, sushupti. But all the time we're in Turiya, all the time. That is the basic unconditioned uh, awareness that the root of all the other states of consciousness. You can observe this in yourself right now if you're willing to look. Now, of course, a lot of people are very hesitant to look <laughs> because it means they have to let go of their identity, of the illusion that this identity exists permanently, plus the illusion that everything else, like the world and so on, exists permanently. Uh, or that I am a person permanently, or that, uh, I mean, so many things that we just assume about the nature of reality due to the structure of language. 
all that has to go overboard before you can really observe yourself in an unbiased way. But Jesus said it. You have to become like a little child to enter the kingdom of heaven. And that means you're not trying to acquire anything. You're not trying to control anything, do anything, go anywhere, be anybody, you know. You're not trying at all, in fact. There's no effort, there's no work, there's no action, there's just being. So anyone can attain this state of being at any time, because after all, if it wasn't there, we wouldn't exist in any form. But what we have to do to see it correctly is to drop the idea of identification or projection of the self with these external forms. And that is why people hesitate. That is why people retain their biases toward the particular rupadis that they're identified with and cling to form and claim that form is real, see, whereas it's not. It can't be. It can't be because, again, it's temporary. And it's not self. It's different from the self. That's why it's perceived. The self is the perceiver. You see? And that's Turiya. Turiya consciousness is with us always. In all three phases of conditioned consciousness. Waking, dreaming, and sleep. Turiya is that which never changes. Turiya is permanent, unborn, undying. Turiya is Brahman. The only thing about Turiya that's not perfectly non-dual is that it has the perception of the other states of consciousness which are dual. But then <clears throat> once the body is dropped, once the mind is let go, one enters Turiyatita, which is the permanent state of Brahman. And that's the completion of self-realization. The completion of freedom, uh, mukti, release, moksha. This is nibbana, in which nothing is experienced, nothing is felt. Complete freedom from suffering. And, and you can have that right now, you see. Anyone can. There's no need for a big academic study of scriptures. There's no need for elaborate performance of rituals and stuff like that. There's no need for a performance of charity and other good works. I mean, that all that is nice, you know. It's nice and it's good. But it's not really necessary for self-realization. Self-realization is something beyond that. Self-realization is pure consciousness alone. So, I don't know if I'm going to continue uh, with the Upanishad series. If I get more feedback, if I see that more people are actually understanding this and are participating, uh, you know, that might motivate me to take the trouble to continue it. Because I'll tell you, right now, straight up, it's a hassle. It's a major hassle. And it's stress for me. Um, I can just sit here silently and I'm fine, you know. <laughs> and to make these videos is a big endeavor. So let me know in the comments. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can gather some kind of, uh, get some kind of a dialogue going here. And that would inspire me, that would motivate me to continue the Upanishadic series further. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>